Hey, this is Greg. Welcome back. I'm taking a little break from my belt grinder project to do some work on this horizontal bandsaw. So I'm cutting a lot of metal these days and uh, just having some troubles with this thing. Uh, it's, a it's one of the Harbor Freight ones that everybody and their brother has. And most people have done the same modification, which is making some extension vice jaws. So I'd uh, created this really nice introduction narration thing, and then I found out that my microphone wasn't working, so I'm going to have to re-narrate it as I talk over it here, try to remember what I was doing. This is just demonstrating that you can clamp a long piece of metal in the, in the vices, no problem. I mean, this is what it's designed for, and it cuts it very well. But the problem is, when you go to cut a shorter piece, so here I am chopping with my hand, that works. The problem is, when you go to cut a shorter piece, the jaws are quite short. They don't make it up to the... Uh, there's quite a gap between that fixed jaw and the saw itself, the saw blade itself, a good uh, three-quarter inch there at least. And so if you try to clamp a short piece of metal in there, the uh, movable jaw just cants over and doesn't clamp it properly. So there's a number of ways to um, get around this. Let the video catch up with my talking here. Basically I want to cut that piece of metal, that's part of the uh, belt grinder that I'm working on. I want to cut it approximately at that black line so here I am just attempting to clamp it into the device, and you can see the, the movable one just cants over and doesn't clamp it firmly. That thing would just pop out of there if you tried to saw it. So the approaches that you can use to, uh, to fix that, you can you know, put a piece of metal of approximately the same thickness in behind it there, but then that means finding a piece of metal of the approximately same thickness, or, or a little bit thinner actually it needs to be. And so you can, uh, here I am trying to figure out well, that piece works, but if I shim it up with another piece and so on, and I can finally get it to work and clamp in there tight enough that I can get a saw cut, but it's a pain in the butt, and you don't want to have to do that over and over and over again. It's just uh, too many operations to cut a simple piece of metal. So it's a bit of a design flaw, I think, in this saw, that they just have these little short jaws that don't work all that well to clamp short pieces far, you know, with that inch gap away from the belt, from the uh, blade, rather. So that would work, but again, it took me, you know, a good minute to set it up in that clumsy manner. It doesn't hold it all that securely. So what most people do is they'll um, make, a, make another set of jaws that are, you know, longer. And like I've done here, and I'm going to show me making this in, the, in this video. That's why those holes are already drilled in that jaw and you um, bolt them on. And that, you know, you know, those come all the way up to where the blade is. So you don't have that gap. And then where my finger's pointing there right now, you'd typically have a little clamping mechanism that uh, keeps that from rocking back and forth that I'm going to make a little later on in this video. So that's the introduction. And now I can with actually making the parts. I also did a complete tune-up of this uh, saw as well. You know, made sure everything was cutting square and true. Quite a lot of work, and I'm going to show the the adjustments that I did a little later on in the video, and 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 how I tested the the cuts. I got it within about twenty thousandths of an inch in both vertical and horizontal, which is pretty darn good for this, you know, not perfectly constructed saw. So let's get on with the build. So I started off by cutting this scrap. Well, I won't call it a scrap. This is what I cut off from the um, main plate of my belt grinder. I recall it was a. 10 inch wide original piece of half inch steel that I narrowed down to about uh, seven or six inches wide. So this is what was left over and it worked out perfectly to build myself a couple of jaws for my uh, bandsaw. So after cutting it off, of course, then I just bring it over to the mill and square up the sides. I did all four sides, you know, both sides of both pieces. Also chamfered um, both sides of both pieces. So eight separate chamfers here. And that turned out nicely, just to make it look pretty. And then, of course, face milled them to get rid of the uh, mill scale and make a nice shiny, smooth surface, square surface. Again, did that for both sides of both pieces. I really like this uh, this face mill. It does a does a really nice job. It's one of the best purchases I made off Amazon. I think it's about seventy bucks, and uh, got the insert tool, so you can always you know have a sharp edge when you want one. It really is a nice finish, as you can see, a nice near finish there. This is about four times speed, by the way, as a, this whole set of videos is all about four times actual speed. Then I clamped the pieces in the uh, 
bandsaw vise and just mark with a sharpie approximate spots where I want to drill my mounting holes. They don't have to be very precise. Sharpie's good enough. I also put a couple of horizontal lines on here so I could position the uh, jaws back in the same place once I remove them and put them back in again. Then I remove the uh, jaws from the bandsaw itself, the factory jaws, both of them. So here I have the long factory fixed jaw clamped to the new jaw that I'm making in my mill and drilling th three holes at six millimeters through both parts. This is just to uh, mark and position the holes. Notice I have a little six millimeter bolt in the center one there just to keep it uh, in place. Then on the uh, new jaw, I drill them out to 9.5 millimeters because I'm going to use a 10 millimeter tap here. I'm going to use 10 millimeter bolts that I have some nice sized ones for this purpose. And then here I'm tapping. I use, you can't really see in the picture here, but I use um, a power ratchet, a Milwaukee power ratchet, but I'm using it sort of manually here at first. It's still handy because you can still use the power to back it out or to, you know, to bring it out temporarily to break chips. And I bolt them together. You can see the bolts are a little too long here on this fixed jaw. So a quick trip over to the lathe to shorten those three bolts down and uh, file them off then put together, we see just nicely recessed here, just the right amount so they don't interfere with the parts clamped in there. I'm basically just repeating the same process here with a short movable jaw and drilling six millimeter holes, just two of them in this, in this part, and then drilling them out to 9.5 millimeters so that I can again tap them in the same way with my uh, 10 millimeter tap for the bolts that are going to go in there. Now this flange is actually thicker, the factory flange is thicker than the fixed jaw. And so the same bolts don't need shortening, they fit just perfectly in this movable jaw. Over at the mini drill press there, I'm just boring those holes out to uh, 10.5 clearance holes. And I put one of these uh, little chamfer bits in there and do a light chamfer on all the holes on both sides just to get rid of any burrs and make them look pretty. Finally, a larger hole in the end of the uh, movable jaw here. This is going to form that screw thread clamping mechanism you'll see in a minute. And I drill this guy out to 11 millimeters and then tap them to 12. I want a nice large diameter and very tight tolerance tapped hole there. And I finish up just by uh, cleaning up the ends of uh, both pieces. And also chamfering both sides of the ends of both pieces. The sides are already uh, chamfered, I'm just chamfering the ends. I really like this chamfer bit too with the uh, indexable carbide. So there's both pieces, the fixed and movable. You can see that the screws aren't protruding on either. And now I need to make a handle, this little knob for that uh, screw clamping mechanism. So I just found a piece of uh, 2 inch 1018 in my bin of metals. Cut that off, cleaned it up with the uh, surface mill on the, in, the, uh, in the mill. I could have done this in the lathe too, but I just figured I'd do it all in the, uh, in the mill instead. Just doing the other side again with that same face mill. Looks beautiful. And this is my poor man's way of finding center when center doesn't have to be that precise. I'm just using my fingers there to feel that the uh, wiggler is indeed going around the full circumference. And then I drill this out to, um, well, it's just a pilot drill first, then I drill it out to 11 millimeters. And then finally I'm going to tap it to 12 millimeters. Now you can see my power ratchet there, but I'm using it manually, more or less. Pull the trigger once in a while, just because it, uh, it's convenient to back it out that way. And Now here I'm, I'm making uh, the knob, I'm making like hand grip on it. I'm going to do six, around the circumference, I'm doing six through like 
halfway through. This is a 5 8 inch end mill that I'm using uh, to cut these grooves, these really pretty substantial grooves around the circumference. I'm going to do six of them. I, I can only access two at a time. So here I'm using the DRO to position just to mark, just to uh, cut slight indents where the other four are going to go. Well, I've got the DRO all set up and positioned here accurately. And then I'll just use those markers later on as I turn this around to the other positions to cut the other four through holes. And this is the final two holes, and you can see I had to make a couple of aluminum slugs there to fill in the gap so I could clamp this thing properly with what's left of the material on there. So there is all six holes done. And taking it out, it's bloody hot, so I'm using a napkin to hold onto it here, just to show you what I got so far. Then I just used a flap disc to uh, round off all those corners and put nice bevels on the surfaces. Back over to the bandsaw, clamped in a square here just to start squaring up my uh, saw to my material. And I found out that uh, one of the jaws, the uh, one of the fixed jaw, uh, it's just a tad too long, so I'm going to have to remove it here again. And then, of course, it's easy work back over at the mill to uh, clean that up. Shorten it down by about a sixteenth of an inch is all it needed. Back on to the bandsaw, tighten it down. And it's good. Then I uh, used an engraving set here just to put an A on each of the movable jaws and a B on each of the fixed jaws, just so we won't ever, ever take these guys off again. I'll get them back on in the same orientation, same side up, same side, same jaws. Now here I just want to show you for my testing, my testing of the uh, cut. Every single time I did the same procedure where I take this aluminum 2x2 two two tube and square it up, mark top on the top where I'm doing my cut so I know which way is which when I get it off of here. Then I do a test cut. And knowing that that front surface is perfectly square, I can then use calipers on the, uh, you know, between the two surfaces to see where I'm off. And then I'd make adjustments. So very methodically, I would make a single adjustment each time. There you can see the uh, off switch isn't working properly. So I'm doing some adjustments off camera to try to get that off switch to go off. Took quite a lot of fiddling around there. And now that I've got the thing off, I deburr it. Again, off camera here a little bit. And then finally I can get my uh, micrometer, well, my digital caliper on there, it doesn't have to be that precise, to uh, test the dimensions. It actually was pretty good at this point, and then I started messing around and I threw it off, but I zoned in on it. And uh, again, I, I did this again and again, where every time I'd make an adjustment, this in this particular case I'm adjusting the uh, fixed jaw there a little bit to square things up a little better. Instead of writing top on every time, I would just take some blue Sharpie and mark the top surface in blue. That way, I, as I cut them off, I can see directly which one the top is. A little smarter. And now the off switch is working. And as you get better, um, you can make thinner and thinner cuts. But I just kept doing this, iterating, making one little adjustment at a time. Okay, hopefully the final test. Itself off. So here's a display of the uh, parts that I cut off of that aluminum tube as I narrowed in on the uh, adjustments. I think there's 16 pieces here. Top row have fatter pieces and I got better. The bottom row have the narrower ones. The bottom right is the last one. So now I want to take this uh, 12 millimeter threaded rod and permanently affix it into the knob that I made. First I made a little stop nut. I had an SAE nut that I tapped out to 12 millimeter. I didn't have a 12 millimeter nut. It's just like a jam nut here so I can keep this thing in place while I have a mill to drill through it. So I've got a 3 16 drill here because I have this roll pin set and I found a 3 16 by inch and a half roll pin that's going to suit here perfectly. 
So I'm using my precision hammer here, my adjustable hammer, to get that into alignment. And then drill the 3 16 hole down through the center of it, through the knob and through the 12 millimeter shaft. Now originally I was just going to do a blind hole here, but then I decided to come out the other side all the way through just in case I need to knock that uh, pin out sometime. So there's a pin in place, a bit of, bit of a burr on it, and I take it over to the vise and uh, file it down smooth. And then I take it over to the Scotch-Brite wheel and clean it all up, polish it up a bit. looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just uh, for a horizontal fan saw. So here we are putting things back together again for probably the last time, at least in this video. It goes together very easily. Those 10 millimeter uh, socket head cap screws have a nice good grip on them so I can do it mostly with my fingers. doesn't need much of a turn with the wrench. Here's the big long adjustment going in to show you how it works. So I'm actually going to make my cut this time on that part from the uh, belt grinder that I uh, wanted to cut off. So there's my black line. I'm getting it positioned. I find that the jaws are really nice to position with because they're now just like a sixteenth away from the, uh, the actual cut line. So they provide a nice way to line things up. And you see that knob now lets me uh, tighten up the, uh, the jaws so it doesn't want to cant anymore. The reason I used a cloth there, a glove there, by the way, is the thing was still hot. It was hot off the mill still after making all those cuts into it. So here, just making sure that everything is nice and smooth and straight, and sure enough it is. Got a beautiful cut on this material. There it is, and it switched off automatically. So uh, the jaws proved themselves out beautifully. Everything worked great. Got a nice smooth cut. Here, I'm just going to take it off with my gloves because, again, it's still hot. And um, I think I measured this. Yeah, here's the square to show that everything is really very square, surprisingly square. I got it down to 20 thousandths of an inch. And I don't think you can do much better with this uh, kind of equipment, unless you're lucky. But you can't even hardly see any daylight through there. It's pretty, pretty good. So I did just use the uh, bandsaw to cut this off. Unfortunately, my film wasn't rolling. I thought it was. Anyway, it fell off, and I just... Um, Took it over to the little belt grinder over here and uh, cleaned up its end. So now that means I can cut something approximately that wide, minus the vice jaw thickness. Which is going to be plenty, and if I need to cut something wider, as I say, I just put a little block of metal in here to compensate for it. And that is it. So now I'll spend a few minutes going through all the adjustments available on this horizontal bandsaw and the things that I played with and any tips I might be able to share. Uh, let's start with the tracking. Uh, I am not going to open up the cover, but you do need to open up this cover. We'll screw on the side here in order to get a good view of the tracking wheel, which is at the top. I'm not going to bother that right now. The tracking wheel has a flange on the back. And when you're adjusting the tracking, you want the blade to be close to that flange, but not rubbing against it. Um, when you adjust the tracking with this bottom most bolt or right most in this position, and that adjusts the, uh, the tracking wheel this way and that way to control the blade path around it. The center bolt here is the, the axle of that tracking wheel, so it just stays tight all the time. And it's a different size of bolt, by the way, just to remind you of that. So this is a 916, 916, so that's the half, I think. And the top one, you have to loosen off in order to adjust the tension, the belt tension, or the, the, the uh, blade tension. And you want the tension to be good and firm, but, uh, but still got a little bit of play to it. It's about right there. Uh, this knob here controls where this blade guide is. But you'll find that you can't, you always need to make sure that these guys can come down and clear your, uh, your vise, wherever your vise is, your uh, movable vise. I've done too many times where this has actually come down and contacted here, and if you wonder why it's not cutting. And likewise, on this side, you've got a bolt here that can slide this one back and forth, but there's really hardly anywhere else it can be because it has to clear the, the frame here. So I've moved it as far forward. You want to keep them as, as tight in as you can 
while avoiding the stops, right? And then to adjust the blade uh, left and right and verticalness, you have these two brackets here, top and bottom. Uh, to access the bottom one, you really need to take off these two screws and take out this little guard blade, this guard here. Um, so a number of adjustments on here. The big bolts, the 9 16ths here, uh, allow you to, there's quite a lot of degree of freedom of these two brackets. They'll slide, you know, this way and this way, as well as rotationally. And you want to make sure that they're down. Um, there's three wheels in here. There's one that pushes against the top of the blade. You want to make sure it's just barely touching the top of that blade to guide it when it's cutting, top and bottom. And then rotationally, that controls, um, you know, how vertical your cut is. And the best way to do that, I find, is to um, clamp a, a square in there. I won't bother clamping it right now, I'm one-handed. But then you can run the blade up and down that square to make sure it's the same distance away the whole, the whole distance, right? So again, these things will, will rotate a little bit. You want to do them both together. You want to make sure it's you know, square and not twisted. And then when you clamp down this bolt, you have to really clamp quite tightly because that's all that's holding this thing from, from moving, right? And the other adjustments on these brackets uh, are these wheels that pinch against the, uh, the saw blade to keep it you know, in position so it doesn't move back and forth. You want them reasonably tight, but you still should be able to turn them but with your thumb. You don't want them so tight that they're binding on the blade terribly, but you want them good and tight so you, you know so it's not a lot of freedom, not a lot of slop in the blade. So I think that's it there. Uh, the only other adjustments that I can think of the switch, which is really finicky to get just right. Um, I actually had to bend a little bit, and I also had to do a little bit of, I won't say sheet metal work, but I found I had to. Um, bang out, dent in. This was bulging out a little bit. And as it came down, it was contact and very tight tolerances on the uh, the base here, where there's really no clearance at all. So I had to bang it in a little bit to get enough clearance so that switch would uh, be able to switch off before that bound up. I actually even, even took my angle grinder, took a little bit of plastic off the top of the switch because it was touching as well, the, uh, the bracket up there. Very finicky. Um, this is just a tensioner. This, this uh, tightens up or loosens that spring. And that spring takes tension off of the... Uh, oops, I got my... <laughs> takes tension off the arm as it comes down. So for steel, you want quite a lot of pressure. That's, you know, here it is bouncing up and down. Quite a lot of pressure. And for aluminum, you want a little bit less. So it doesn't cut too quickly and bind through the aluminum. Um, I guess final thing, you've got three position pulleys in here. I used to just leave it in the center. That controls the speed of the, the blade. And uh, this is the tensioner. It just moves the motor up and down to control the tension of that belt. Okay, I think that's all the adjustments I can think of at the moment. And I've visited all of them and adjusted all of them. I think it's in pretty good tune right now. It takes a while to get right, but once it's right, it cuts nice and square. And the best way to test the squareness, the acid test, is as I did in my uh, demonstration, in my tune-up, is to put a nice known squared off piece of metal in here, cut it off, and then check for squareness. And adjust as necessary. I guess I can show one final thing, that, that piece of metal that I just cut off, and again, I haven't run it through the mill yet, so that's just how it was cut off, nice and smooth. Um, the purpose of this is part of the uh, belt grinder that I'm making. So here's the belt grinder main plate, and this is the tracking arm with the dovetail on it. It slides in there, and it'll be held up by a gas strut. It will uh, you know, put pressure on this, this way, and basically the wheel mounts here, this is where the belt's going to run around this side, and the wheel mounts here, and, and this is just the, uh, the piece of metal that makes an interface. So um, the L shape here is so that it can 
mount approximately like that. This, this will get um, cut away so it mounts right directly on top of that. And, the, and this will mount on here. And that will give me some tracking adjustment back and forth. This wheel goes up and down like this a little bit, just an just a eighth of an inch movement kind of thing to allow the uh, tracking of the belt. So that's what that hunk of metal is for. Okay, so now that that uh, bandsaw project is done, a little side project is done, I'll get back to building this. Thanks for watching.